贵族。President, please be seated. Ang tunuri apa kah mato kah jemla kah nite bithi samla kah hai to tanik udah bithi kah tun tuk. The court is back in session. The chamber once more gives the floor to counsel for Nonchia to continue putting questions to the witness. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, let me go back to something we were discussing before the break um, when I asked you about um, Pak, uh, K. Fox's son uh, saying 30,000 Khmer Rouge soldiers were killed in combat. Let me read to you what he said exactly because he's giving some more details and I would like to ask your reaction. Mr. President, E3 slash 35, uh, Khmer, ERN 00340571, um, English 00346156, and French 00367728. Um, Mr. Witness K. Park Sun is asked the question, was it true that there was an evacuation of people from the East Zone? Answer. There was an evacuation uh, of people from the East Zone to other sectors. At the same time, fighting along the borders were also intensifying. In mid-1978, there were more than 30,000 Khmer Rouge soldiers killed in combat. The bodies of the dead soldiers were taken to be cremated in Bung Snai Kiln in Kampong Cham province. Tapauk was in charge of that kiln. I knew about this story because I went there to search in a list for the names of my two cousins who, as it was heard, had died and were sent there. Um, does that somehow, uh, is that somehow something familiar to you? Uh, the bodies of thousands of um, dead Khmer Rouge soldiers killed in combat at the border, cremated at Bung Snai? Answer, no. Um, uh, one other follow-up question um, in relation to a subject that I discussed with you before the break. I asked you questions about um, the Workers' Party slash KGB. But you also mentioned in your WRI, that is E3 slash 375, uh, in that same excerpt, um, Khmer ERN 038798, English 00360757, and French 00369919. You spoke about uh, the Sreikar party. What exactly uh, did you mean when you said the Sreikar party or the CIA? Answer. Un told me that members of the Sereka and CI parties were one and the same thing, and they could even be referred to as white Khmer or Khmer Saw. Uh, that was exactly uh, my next question, but you have answered that question now. Thank you, um, Mr. Witness. Uh, let me now turn to something you said um, in um, your very recent statement, uh, that is E319 slash uh, 
um, and that is in um, answer eight. Uh, you were asked, Mr. Witness, questions about um, the rebellion uh, when you arrived in Krochmar district and um, people who were detained on that island. I will return to that shortly. But you also said uh, later on uh, that there was another rebellion, uh, another rebellion in Krochmar and in that same answer you said that a week later the Vietnamese troops arrived. Uh, I just want to make sure, um, have you been describing uh, two rebellions in Krochmar in 78 or one? Answer. When I arrived one week later, there was a rebellion of the mobile unit. And then I was transferred to Sector 32, where there was an armed rebellion. The inhabitants of that area had to be evacuated to Sector number 42. I'm only having the English text of your um, WRI, but it seems to suggest that after uh, the rebellion that you discussed just now and, and yesterday at length, there was a second rebellion or another rebellion in Krauchmar. Is that not correct? Answer. There was only one rebellion. On another occasion, when the army arrived, there were armed conflicts, which gave rise to an evacuation of the local inhabitants. Um, th thank you, Mr. Witness. Um, before moving now to, the, uh, to questions in relation to that rebellion. Um, one question about um, Ta'an um, and Sector 43 Chief Sim. Um, you said um, that um, you never met um, An or Sim before 79. My understanding is correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. I only met him after the arrival of the Vietnamese army. Um, now it seems that Ta'an was also uh, K. Pauk's deputy, deputy of the zone. Um, is there a reason particular reason why uh, you never were in a position to either meet uh, Ta'an or Ta'sim? Answer. I never attended any secret or public meetings in Taku. Um, but talking in terms of hierarchical structure, um, is my understanding that it, it, it potentially could be unusual for you never to have met Ta'an or Ta'sim, or was that in the, in the framework of the hierarchy something which was completely understandable? Answer. As I said earlier, 
I assumed my duties for approximately one year, but I never attended any meetings with them in sector number 22. I spent only two or three months in the Krochmar district before leaving again, and that is why I was not able to meet them. I never met them. Very well, Mr. Witness. Did you ever personally meet uh, Son Sen? Did you ever have a meeting with him face to face? Answer, while I was in the district, I had meetings with him. One of them was an opportunity for him to give uh, objectives and instructions regarding the recruitment of soldiers and the establishment of administrative structures. There was another meeting at which he had to establish biographies and he told me that one of my brothers had been uh, discovered and I was very afraid. He told me I shouldn't be afraid and that I should uh, go back and work with Kepok, and, and that I wouldn't be taken away and executed. Um, you also um, said yesterday that uh, Son Sen became the East Zone Secretary after Sao Pim had died. Um, do you know how long it took after Sao Pim's death on the 3rd of June 1978 for Sun Sen to assume that particular function of chief of the East Zone? Answer, I do not know. Sun Sen was the commander in chief. It is possible that that was five or six months before. When I had gone there, Rin told me that Son Sen was the commander in chief and the zone chief as well. Um, in one of your statements, you said that um, your in law, um, K. Pauk, uh, and uh, Son Sen didn't like each other. Um, do you know why? why that was? Why, why was it that they didn't like each other? Answer, from what I was able to find out, when they were in the zone, there were no problems between them, but when they went to the battle front, they did not see eye to eye with one another because the one would say that you can't carry the earth alone and that everyone had to carry the earth. Do you recall when the last time was when you saw uh, Son Sen <laughs> physically present in the East Zone? Answer, I was invited to attend an education session and that is why I saw him. I hadn't known him before then. Do you recall what Un told you about Son Sen? Um, did Un ever speak to you about what kind of person Son Sen was? Answer, no, he didn't tell me anything. He, he spoke about him after the uh, battles. He, he, he said that uh, we were marked and would run from our duties and he asked us to do nothing more.
Um, let me now um, turn to uh, the rebellion that you described. Um, you said that they were young um, combatants from mobile units, um, both Khmer and, uh, and Cham. Um, you also gave some numbers um, as to um, those rebe rebel forces. What is your recollection now? How big was this group uh, that was subsequently detained at that island? It was said that there had been a rebellion hatched from the top, and it was said that it was hatched by members of the KGB, but I did not know any particular figures. I didn't have any particular figures. Um, in one of your statements, you spoke about 80 people, 8-0. Um, it, was it your understanding that there were uh, less than 100 or more than 100 involved in that rebellion. I, I know it's difficult, it's a long time ago, but could you give us an approximate number? Answer, I do not have any accurate recollections about that, but I saw between 10 and 20 people. I saw them from a distance, and I left shortly thereafter. Uh, what is your recollection as to the nature of the rebellion? Was it an armed uprising? Um, did they use guns? Uh, did they use artillery? Um, what kind of rebellion was it? Answer. I do not very well remember. However, during that period, forces from the center went to that location, and we saw that there had been a rebellion. The situation was very tense. The forces from the center surrounded the insurgents, and a report was sent to the top from the center, or rather was sent to the top and to the center on that subject. Um, a witness testified earlier in this courtroom, um, a woman named No Satas, that she uh, heard gunfire do you recall hearing gunfire or artillery fire as well? Answer, no. However, during that period, my assistant was wounded by gunshots. He was seriously wounded. And since I wasn't stationed at a fixed location, I was not able to know any more than that. Um, were you aware, aware at the time um, what kind of forces, um, what kind of military equipment rather, was used by the center to crush the rebellion? Did they come with tanks, for instance, or did they come with heavy artillery? Do you know anything about this? Answer, all I saw were rockets and automatic weapons, including guns. I saw the zone security 
forces and intervention forces from the center. Do you know how many soldiers uh, were used by the center to um, fight these rebels? Were they coming with hundreds of soldiers or thousands of soldiers? Are you able to give us an estimate? There were 300 soldiers. 300 soldiers from the center that were used to crash the rebellion? Is, is that how I should understand you? Answer, that is correct. They came to uphold security in that sector, not only in Krochma, but also in Pil Chileng. Um, you just spoke about someone that, someone that you knew uh, who got injured in this fighting. Um, are you able, are you in a position to tell us in general how many center forces, how many center soldiers were injured or killed uh, in these fights? Answer, there was no wounded soldier. Some people were wounded by militia men who opened fire on them from their hideouts, that is snipers. Now you also testif testified uh, before the investigators of the OCIJ that um, you made up a report about um, the people who were arrested and detained at the island a report to UN. Um, do you remember what you wrote in that report to UN? Answer. I sent the report to UN and RUN from the zone before they were able to obtain information on that rebellion. I understand, but, but do you recall today what you wrote in that report? Which, which details, which specifics did you give uh, to UN? Answer, I do not remember uh, much. Generally speaking, I wrote that the situation was not good, that insurgents had orchestrated a rebellion, and those were the key ideas conveyed in that report. Um, now, you said that um, the insurgents were both Khmer and Cham. Um, are you able to tell us whether there was some division in those numbers, how many insurgents were Khmer and how many insurgents were Cham? Answer, it is impossible for me to make that distinction because I do not go to that place in order to count the people involved and to make that distinction. But then how did you know that the insurgents consisted of both Khmer and Cham? What was the source of your knowledge in respect of that? But the Pope also a problem. Answer, I heard about that from soldiers 
who was saying that there were Cham and Khmer insurgents. Um, in your um, WRI E319 slash 19.3.86, in uh, question and answer 53, uh, Mr. President, uh, you were asked the following question. Did you ever get orders from the upper echelon to screen out and kill all the charm in Krauchmar district? And you answered, no, I never got such an order. Do you still stand by that answer? Answer. The upper echelons did not give any instructions that the Cham and the Khmer be purged. The instructions were that CIA and KGB agents should be eliminated. In that same WRI, but then in um, question 57, you were asked a similar question and you were confronted with earlier evidence that you had given. And um, the question from the investigators is as follows. Um, you said, um, the orders, uh, sorry, you said, quote, the orders to purge the people in Krauchmar district came from Son Sen and all the rebels were killed. The arrests and killings did not target the Cham. They targeted all the people who joined the rebel movement. Is your account correct? And your answer is yes, it is correct. Um, do you still stand by that answer that you gave? Um, answering the questions of the investigators. Man. Yes, uh, that is correct. As I said earlier, even to my uh, younger relative, uh, when they did not have a clean uh, biography, they were smashed. Um, in your earlier statement to the investigators, uh, E3 slash uh, 375, more particularly on um, page English 00360759, um, Khmer 00348800, and French, Zero zero three six nine nine two two. Um, you were asked a general question about the Muslim charms. Um, question: Were the Muslim charms considered as the enemy to the com to the Communist Party of Kampuchea? And you answer: I did not think they were the enemy to the Communist Party. However, the Muslim charms were not allowed to pray. Even the Buddhist monks were not allowed to chant. At that time, all religions were abolished. Do you still stand by that answer today? Yes, I stand by to my previous statement. Um, let me now turn to what I think is my very last subject, um, Mr. Witness. Um, but before I get to one small question, you talked about um, a person called Chin, who was um, chief of the rubber plantation in 
um, sector 42. Um, Jim, is that possibly someone we also know as Peck Jim? No, I do not know the surname, but I know Brother Jim. He was chief of a uh, Jamka Andong uh, rubber plantation. And later on, he was assigned to take charge of a Chup uh, rubber plantation. Very well. Uh, now, my last subject, um, Mr. Witness, and that is um, um, our client, Nguyen Chia. Is it correct that you never met him face to face like you met? Uh, like you have met, for instance, Son Sen. You never saw Nguyen Chia in person. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I was never even close to him, nor did I see him in person. I also did not see his uh, photo or picture in the past. I only saw him now. Um, do you know what his position was between 75 and 79? What did he do? I know that uh, Noon Chia was the president of the uh, National Assembly and senior cadres uh, uh, told me that he was in charge of uh, education for the uh, senior cadres. Is there anything else that you know about his position? No, I don't. Um, his position as um, chief or head of the National Assembly. What, what, what was that function about? Um, which tasks did he have because of that function? Do you know? I knew through the cadres at the sector level that he, he was the chief of the uh, assembly and in charge of uh, politics and policy, and he is the uh, second person after Pol Pot. I understand. Um, my question was, uh, what were the tasks uh, connected to uh, his position as chairman of the National Assembly or um, giving political training. What, what was he concretely doing? Uh, what was it that the people told you that he was doing? I do not know the details. I understand that you do not know the details, um, but did your, or did the people who talked to you about him, did they explain, um, or did they tell you about specific instructions they ever heard him issue? No, I did not see one. At that time, they use a pseudonym, uh, 87, and we only saw a messenger, then we uh, recognized that uh, this messenger belonged to this uncle or that uncle with a, a, a number designation. Let, let me ask it differently. Is there anything that you recall hearing uh, from the people who spoke about Nguyen Chia. Um, is there anything concrete? Uh, for instance, this happened 
Um, this person was arrested because Nguyen Chia ordered it. Have you ever heard a concrete example of such an event? No, I did not. Because people were taken away and disappeared, and I did not know under whose orders uh, it was. Um, I understand, um, Mr. Witness, but just to be sure, let me now read to, to you back what you have said earlier uh, in your WRI E319 slash 19.3.86, uh, Mr. President. Question and answer 64. Um, I will read the question and uh, then also your answer. Do you think that K. Pork, the zone secretary, permitted the secretaries of other sectors to decide to kill or purge without his orders or without informing him? Mr. Witness, and you answer then as follows. To my knowledge, decisions or orders to purge or killing were made by Office uh, 870. That was not for K. Park or the sectors to decide. I had heard that Nguyen Chia was chairman of the National Assembly and was the one who gave political training to all the cadres. Therefore, decisions to purge or kill came from him. Now, is my understanding correctly that you are um, speculating as to what Nguyen Chia's role uh, between 75 and 79 was? I made that uh, statement based on what I heard from the cadres and not what I witnessed. I was told he was in charge of uh, providing education uh, to senior cadres in terms of uh, politics, education, and a whole range of uh, uh, subjects. And those cadres uh, could uh, involved in the, the purchase of the uh, enemy uh, during the study session uh, with him. Um, now, I understand that you have never seen Nguyen Chia in person, but you did testify that you have been going to study sessions. Um, study sessions that were led by Nguyen Chia were often um, attended by uh, many cadres, hundreds, sometimes thousands of cadres. Um, in your experience, is it very likely um, that Nguyen Chia, in, in front of hundreds or thousands of cadres, would speak about purges of particular people? Witness, please hold on, and the Deputy Co-Prosecutor, you have the floor. Uh, yes. Uh, my objection to this question, this witness has testified as to what he was told by the cadres who attended. Now counsel is act asking him to specu speculate. Um, so the question is calling for speculation, not for factual information from this witness. Um, <clears throat> let me rephrase my question. Um, Mr. Witness, you've attended study sessions yourself, you said. Um, while at those study sessions, um, <coughs> did you ever hear about anybody speak about instructions to purge or to arrest particular cadres, people with names? Did you ever hear such a thing? I never attend, uh, attended any study session uh, organized by Nguyen Chia. I attended a study session chaired by Sun Sen. 
and the theme of the session was about the infiltrator, infiltrated enemy, namely the KGB and the CIA. And the KGB force was much stronger than the CIA one. And uh, for that reason, and as it was compounded by the fact that uh, some some traitors attend, uh, joined uh, this KGB force, we had to prepare ourselves to uh, counter-attack uh, this uh, force. And they were the puppet of the uh, June. I understand very well that um, Son Sen or others spoke in general about um, CIA or KGB agents, quote unquote, borrowing inside. Um, but that was in general terms, the same um, things that you can read in the revolutionary flag. Did you ever hear anybody, Son Sen or others, speak about cadres with names who were to be arrested? No, they didn't tell us. The person was promoted to be a chief, for instance, and after a few months, he was uh, he disappeared, and that happened uh, su successively. And from my observation, those cadres uh, holding a position in the uh, center zone disappeared. Almost all of them disappeared. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you. And the Chamber now hands the floor to the Defence Team for Q Sampong to put the questions to this witness, uh, the witness Bansi. You may proceed, Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning, Mr. Bansi. I am Anta Guisse. I am the co-international counsel of uh, Que Sampan, and uh, in this capacity, I'm going to put a few questions to you. My first question is, um, can you please specify, you said, in fact, that you originally came from the central zone, so can you tell us how many sectors there were in the central zone under the DK regime and the names of these sectors, if you remember them. There were three sectors in the central zone, sector 41, 42, and 43, respectively. And if I understood your testimony, you during the DK regime, you were only uh, were performing your duties in Sector 42, if I understood correctly. But yes, uh, that is correct. And when you were in the fishing unit, that was in Sector 42. So can you remind me in which commune, in which district you were? I was in Prepro Sop uh, district in sector 42. Then, when uh, you were appointed uh, deputy of the Chamkalu district, this was in Sector 42, and if I understood your testimony properly, your direct superior was Su Sun, am I correct? Yes, it was Su Sun, who is the uh, sister-in-law, my sister-in-law. Um, in French, I heard that it was your sister-in-law. So if I understood your testimony properly yesterday, 
she was uh, your wife's cousin. Am I correct? Yes. She was uh, my wife's cousin. That's why I refer to her as my uh, sister-in-law. You spoke about uh, the use of different names before, during, and after the DK regime, different revolutionary nicknames. So my question is, when you are Chamka Le, under which name did the people know you, and in particular Susan, which name did she know about you? Her native name was Ki, and later on she uh, changed her name to Sun. It, it is similar to uh, the condition where Kai Pok changed his name from Kai Wen. Um. My question, in fact, was different. Maybe it wasn't very clear. My question was focused on you. I wanted to know that when you were in Chamka Le, which name would you use and under which name did So Sun know you? In Chamka Le district, uh, I use the name Ho. And you're sure you didn't use the name of Tapho in uh, Chamkalu? No, I did not use the uh, name Po. When you arrived, um, Later on in Krochma, did you use uh, the name Ho or the name Ho? I did not use the word Ho. I actually use uh, another uh, name. I use Ho at uh, Chamka uh, Le and in Krochma. The, word, uh, the name used was Haim. So th I hope everybody is clear. At that time, I did not use the word Ho. Ho was used only when I was at Nu and Chamka Lu. Can you tell us why you changed nicknames when you went to Krochma? I did not do it by myself. Uh, it was the instruction from the upper level. Who asked you to change your revolutionary nickname and were you told why? I was told that I should not use uh, any number uh, to represent myself and that I should have a, a different alias. And when you say you were told, who told you that? It was Eun, the sector secretary. I'm putting questions to you uh, on your alias, uh, and because later on I will get back to this, because a certain number of witness, witnesses spoke about uh, the presence of a district uh, chief by the name of Ho in Krochma, so I'll get back to that later. But I also would like to get back to this point because uh, at the hearing of 4 June 2015, a little bit before 9.52, so soon, uh, remembered you, apparently, under uh, the alias Tapku, P-H-O-S. Uh, 
So my question is, again, are you sure that So Soon did not know you under the name of Tapu when you worked with her? But, uh, when I worked at the district, I did not use the name Po. In fact, the word Po, uh, the name Po was used when I uh, fled into the jungle in 1979. Alors, est-ce que... So is it possible, therefore, because you saw so soon after 1979, so is it under this alias that she knew you or that she used to call you after 1979? No, she did not uh, call me by the name of Ho. She called me Pop. Uh, that's what her husband called me uh, too. That was, in fact, precisely my question. I think maybe my pronunciation led to this confusion. So you said uh, that uh, when you were in this central zone that you always worked in Sector 42. Yesterday, the international co-prosecutor read out to you statements um, by a former district head in Sector 41, and he asked you to comment this statement. And my question is the following. At one point in time, did you ever cooperate with uh, people from Sector 41, whether in the fishing unit or when you were working as a deputy in Chamkalu? or when you were a, a, the district leader in Krochma? No, I did not uh, have any uh, cooperation with them. It's Is it true, therefore, that under these conditions, that you, as a person who worked in the central zone in Sector 42, and then in the east zone in Krochma, you had no way of knowing what was happening in Sector 41, and generally speaking, you attended no meetings uh, related uh, to Sector 41. Yes, that is uh, correct. I never uh, attended any meeting uh, with them. Vous êtes you, at one point in time, spoke about a zone standing committee. Can you tell us who was a member of this zone standing committee? I'm speaking about the central zone here. And uh, can you tell us who attended uh, the meetings of this uh, Zone Standing Committee, if you know? For the uh, Central Zone uh, members, there were those uh, members from the uh, sector level and other uh, senior cadres as well. I did not attend such a meeting, but I knew uh, members, including Anne. So Anne was a member of the Zone Standing Committee, and he was in charge of uh, Sector 41. Do you know who was a member of the Zone Standing Committee uh, in uh, Sector 42? What I uh, knew is that the sector uh, secretary is uh, bold. 
and he was also in charge of a Barai district. I don't know who was in charge for Preprosop of and other districts and I learned about that when I was in the uh, forest and he was uh, appointed to be in charge of the deputy commander uh, in the battlefield. So did I understand properly that you're speaking about Tet Puch. Yesterday at the hearing, a little bit past 10, 12, you said that uh, Kup came from the southwest. That is to say, he came after the central zone cadres and the north zone cadres had left. Uh, so he must have been aware of the arrest of these cadres, or at least he should have known where uh, the security centers were located. And uh, the prosecutor asked you if this was the Puh, who was the district, the Barai district secretary, and you answered a little bit later that you did not know when he held that position, but a priori, can you confirm that Puh was indeed the Barai district secretary? Puh was uh, secretary of Barai district. According uh, to uh, what I knew, the cadres actually knew him well, that he was the uh, chief of the Barai district. And for me personally, I learned of his position while I was in the jungle with him. So if I understood well, you never met him during the decay period, am I correct? I met him, as I said, when we fled uh, through the uh, forest. So it was uh, towards the uh, end of the uh, regime, and I met him constantly while we were in the forest. Vous avez évoqué des cadres. Uh, Did he talk about uh, cadres who, know, who knew him and who talked about him? And do you know whether those cadres attended meetings with him? Please uh, repeat your question. I am unclear. Vous avez indiqué que you stated that cadres talked to you about KPOC. My question to you is whether those cadres ever attended any meetings with him. Uh, witness, please hold on, and the deputy co-prosecutor, do you have the floor? Uh, yes, you're, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make sure something is clear. The question that was, as it was translated to me, was asking about KIPOC, and I think the questions you have been asking were about a different person, po Poach, <laughs> but in English it was translated Kaipok. Oui, effectivement, il doit y avoir encore un problème. Yes, indeed. There must be a problem with the accent. Let me spell that out for the interpreters. I was speaking of Poach, P O C H, who was district secretary for Barai. Uh, since you mentioned uh, witness that cadres had talked about that person, I wanted to know whether those cadres attended any meetings with him. Answer, yes. Those who attended those meetings talked about Poach and about his work as well. And those persons fled into the jungle later. 
Mr. President, I see the time is ripe for the break. President, it is time for us to break for lunch. And we will resume at 1.30. May the court officer take the necessary measures to ensure that the witness is able to rest during the break and bring him back at 1.30 p.m. with the expert. That is the, assi the uh, counsel assisting him. And um, perhaps uh, the accused should be taken to the, to the cell down.